In, in the world of reputation management, you've got to be thinking three or four steps ahead. And I just cannot work out what they were thinking about, what their plan was when they went into this interview. This interview w- was sort of box office. What was your reaction to A, them doing it and B, how it went for them? Well, let's just roll back uh, a week or so, because I think this started with an attempt to kind of control the narrative, which you and I remember from political days is quite a what a kind of guiding principles PR, try and get your message out first. And for many years, that was kind of through the traditional media. We're now seeing in the world of PR other ways of trying to control the media. So it's a film, it's a book, or in the case of these two, it was a documentary which they paid for. Yeah. I can see the germ of idea there, which is get the, the documentary out, get your message across, find someone to interview you, tell people that it's been paid for, but that kind of got several thousand uh, hits. I think it's a big step, Aisha, to go from that, which got some media coverage, to prime time interview on the BBC with Laura Kunzberg. I mean, I'm still trying to puzzle. I'm sitting here thinking, what was the plan? (laughs) Because I can sort of see that there might have been an attempt to contextualise that the company they were involved with, actually there were other companies as well, applying for contracts and that there was the VIP lane kind of okay up to a point but you've always in in the world of reputation management you've got to be thinking three or four steps ahead and I just cannot work out what they were thinking about what their plan was when they went into this interview. Yeah it's rather extraordinary one can only sort of imagine they got PR advice from Prince Andrew because it did have sort of big vibes of that Emily Maitlis um, uh, interview where you were sort of watching it and thinking, I mean, the abiding, you know, feeling I had, and I think many people was just who advised them to to do this. And I think one of the things that came mm. across quite strongly was, you know, they obviously agreed on a line of argument because they kept coming back to this thing saying it's not a crime to have lied to to to, to the press. But actually that paints them in a very bad light for lots of lots of reasons. Why do you think that was the line of argument they decided to to hit on? And, you know, do you think they've actually had professional advice on on this? Or do you think they've done it themselves? Well, um, I wouldn't like to speculate, but I, I they do mention a few times that they relied on their advisors, which I think is a bit of a kind of easy way out. So obviously there were advisors. I don't know what kind of advice it was. Was it legal advice? Was it communications advice? I think they were trying to generate some sympathy that's a very tricky area in any world in politics and business any walk of public life the kind of idea that we should be feeling sympathy towards them was obviously part of the message they were trying to convey however what now is the case it's leading your news stories it's leading the news stories around most of the media Uh, a lot more people know about them now than they did even uh, a week ago and most people who've thought about it now think that actually this 60 million figure is stuck in their minds so i just it, it's they've raised the profile of the issue i think without thinking it through and one of the things that david and i talk about in the podcast is this kind of when can you take back and when can you take back control in a crisis and they certainly do not seem to have taken back control in this crisis no, I mean, if anything, as you say, it, it's turbocharged the issue. Um, it's really raised their profile in sort of the worst way uh, possible. And most people will, will just have a, a pretty um, dim view of them after after this um, after this interview. I mean, can you think of any examples? I mean, we, we the the Prince Andrew interview. Many people are kind of thinking back on that today. Are there many examples, Simon, where somebody is in a crisis and they do decide to do something quite punchy and go, right, we're going to get on the front foot, try and take the the initiative, do a big interview, and they actually come out on top? Does that happen often? I think very occasionally, very experienced politicians can do that. I'm thinking of someone like Bill Clinton, who took it on the chin during the height of the Monica Lewinsky crisis but you've got to be a very skilled politician to do that most people in business and elsewhere simply should steer well clear of this kind of high profile interview without as i said having thought through what the consequences might be because it's just a completely different terrain to the terrain they used to i know the baroness moan is indeed a member of the house of lords but she's principally known as a businesswoman she doesn't do politics in fact she's not even sitting in the house of lords now and these kind of interviews these set piece big interviews are for people used to being in the public eye yeah and i think I think that really, really came across today because I actually felt that the style of the interview as well, Laura Koonsberg was not overly 
aggressive. She asked sort of, you know, good questions and the right questions. And it was almost like Michelle Moon and her husband sort of did the damage to themselves. It did look like they were very, very out of out of their depth. I mean, yes. you 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 advise a range of clients. I mean, you and I worked together in government yeah. back in in the day, Simon. You have advised many, many top people, from members of the royal family to to top people in business. Do you find that when you have clients who are perhaps you know not used to the rough and tumble of these kind of interviews or this kind of press scrutiny they're very very wealthy they've probably not had that many people saying no to them when they decide that this is a good idea is it quite hard as an, as an advisor to talk them out of it do they take advice uh the best people do absolutely um but i think what often happens is almost an element of naivety the people who are very wealthy live in a kind of bubble and sometimes it's very hard to break that bubble. So, for instance, I would have thought that they should have considered well before this and it may be too late now. Why don't we take a large chunk of the proceeds that we've admitted we receive from this equipment and, and set up a charity or a foundation or, or fund X number of apprenticeships? I mean, just stuff that changes the narrative in a positive way. And I, I, I didn't see any hint of that contrition or that sort of shift to say actually we accept that this is something we want to try and address by doing the right thing by society so that that's the sort of thing that i think good advisors should always be able to do is to help clients in the situation move on genuinely as opposed to try and move on in a medium that simply won't work I mean, I, I don't understand why they've put their head above the parapet. I mean, I think if I was advising anybody in this situation, I'm sure it would be the same. It's just actually keep your just keep your, your head down. A couple of messages have come in. One of our listeners has said, enjoying this interview, two letters immediately spring to mind when hearing Moon, B and S. I'll leave you to work out what that stands for. Um, Scott has messaged in saying, hello, Aisha. I often think there but for the grace of God, people do make mistakes and come to regret them. The problem with the Baroness is that she was charmed and remains convinced that she did nothing wrong. Scott's hit upon something there, hasn't he? Because actually, if she had shown a bit more contrition, Simon, yep. maybe we wouldn't yep. be feeling this way. I think that's absolutely right. And we can think of another famous interview like that as well. I mean, there's another great principle of PR, Aisha, which is when in a hole, stop digging. <laughs> and I, as you were intimating, I think when we're sitting there thinking, this is a hole, <laughs> why not? And they weren't going to, why not just stop the interview? Because this is not going anywhere yeah. but a bad place. Stop digging. Don't send an elevator down the hole. Like, this is like really <laughs> bad. This hole is bad. We want to get out this yes. hole. Don't send supplies down this hole. Just like we need to get out of this um, hole. So um, f just to wrap this up, Simon, yeah. um, I mean, look, they've done, they've done the documentary, as you see. They've now done this absolute sort of kind of car crash motorway pile up interview. If you were advising them, what, what should they do next? Well, as we've already said, I'd go quiet for as long as possible. No doubt about that. I would actually still even now try and think if there are ways of showing that they've listened and do something with that money, even if they don't want to, that actually acknowledges that they can see that. And, it's, and, and as Laura said, it's about the optics. These situations are always about the optics. The optics of this... Let, let aside the legal sort of uh, and, and actually people I think might just give them might give them a little bit of credit if they did something that showed that they accepted they got uh, the kind of the optics wrong if nothing else mm. what about just saying sorry and admitting they got this wrong and just giving back the money they could do that I think they're going to find it difficult to say sorry now because they've had two big chances and they fluff that I think any sorry now will actually be just a, a little too late um, yeah, I mean, we heard West Streeting on Laura Kunzberg as well, making it quite clear in his words, the Labour government is going to come after people who believe who they believe profiteered from PP equipment. So I think this has a way to run, you know, mm -hmm. Asia.